Okay, so uh, I am here uh, with Matthew Lillard and uh, Bill Rehor. Re 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 okay, I got right the first time. Bill Rehor. Um, not only are these two gentlemen, uh, you know, some of the uh, brilliant minds behind Beatles and Grimm, uh, they are both heavily involved with the upcoming D and D show that will appear on the D and D Adventures uh, Fast Channel. Uh, Purple Worm Kill Kill. Faster Purple Worm. Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill. Oh man, that's uh, it's, a. It is a little bit, but in a good way. Um, so uh, first question: uh, What's the premise of the show? Yeah, uh, the original way we pitched the show is it's Dungeons and Dragons meets Whose Line Is It Anyways. It's a one-hour show with four first-level adventurers go off into the world to be the heroes they've always dreamed of, with hopes and dreams and aspirations, and they come face-to-face -face with a legendary monster from Dungeons and Dragons. Each episode ends in a total party kill. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's different. It's different than... So, so my, I, I, I guess my follow-up question to that is, um, I, I know first level adventurers in D&D pretty well, a stiff wind can kill them. So how do you make the show last an hour? <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with a lot of ramp up. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, the, the idea is, it, it, it's not, we're not trying to create a show about killing characters. Mm. We're trying to create a show about a meaningful journey mm -hmm. that happens to end in a player's demise. So we give them a real quest with real goals and they are really trying their best to accomplish this feat that's been put in front of them. And unfortunately, it's an impossible feat. But, um, you know, that's, that's... They don't know that going in. <laughs> yeah, the players, you know, the, 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 the players are asked to play their characters as people who really believe they can succeed and, um, and they do a wonderful job of that. And they, and through that journey of, of trying to climb this impossible hill, you find a lot of comedy and a lot of meaning um, and uh, just a lot of fun for everybody. So do the players know that their demise is coming is yeah and everyone i mean every episode ends in a tpk okay so players know dm knows that's that's how the game goes all right um, so so, so th th this is not like uh you know please spend a lot of we're time not them. yeah okay yeah <laughs> that, that, that was like you know a pretty important question you know uh there there's they they know what's about to happen yeah. oh 100 oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah and you know uh, early on there was a lot of discussion about well, should we let them win sometimes? You know, should there be some kind of hope that they're going to get away with it and, mm. and escape or run away or whatever? And what we finally decided is that if, if people even sometimes can survive, then it becomes a crushing disappointment when they don't. Okay. Whereas when the audience knows that this is what's going to happen, that this that they have an inevitable demise in front of them, then the, the, the joy of the show comes in seeing the kind of courage that they can muster to face something that is unwinnable. Mm -hmm. And um, it, the players do a wonderful job of stepping up and bringing uh, that real human uh, courage to these moments and and just doing their best in impossible odds and it's and it's wonderful it's wonderful to watch and and each story is completely self-contained and each episode has a different cast because we're starting a new story but each one finds its own feet and finds its own meaning mm -hmm. so uh, are either of you guys like Star Trek fans yeah, uh, a yeah, a little bit. All right, yeah. So this this is kind of like the Kobayashi Maru. Yes, uh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah you know. Know. Yeah, yeah. In, until uh, Kurt. Reached, yeah. But. Well, that's that's what I was going to say. It's right. like, have you have you guys had any players yet who have tr somehow tried to like rig? Break the system, like, have, like what, like uh, any, anyone, anyone, yes. like usually Matt. Okay. <laughs> Make no mistake. I DM one game, and the first thing I did is I made everyone second level. Oh, <laughs> I'm not losing again. You guys are gonna win. Uh, did not. It did not help. No, it's the you know. Look, I think the players are playing to win. They yeah. are playing okay. to defeat the bad guy. Um, and we, and that's there's like there's a freedom within that. Mm -hmm. They're committed to the task. So yeah, they're using their brain. They're cunning to escape their demise, but eventually it comes for all of them. 
Uh, well, so what what are some of like the, the things that players uh, that the audience can look forward to to seeing like the players try to to you know, beat the odds? Yeah, I think that one of the great things that's that's developed as the course uh, over the course of the show is that there are these. Um, these small victories in every episode. Okay. Right? These, if, if they're on this journey to accomplish a task, and they, they, they may not get to the final destination to win the day, but there are a lot of times there are these little pieces of, of hope that are born out of these out of out of these failures, and there is something really rewarding about finding that piece of hope mm-hmm. in this otherwise bleak demise. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, you know, in the uh, the live show that we did yesterday, um, which is not one of the scenarios that we use in the TV show. Um, so Matt was one of the players in this this uh, story, and it was a family of dwarves who were protecting this magical forge in their homeland uh, against a red wizard of Thay. Um, no chance whatsoever. Yeah. But. They did um, get these, uh, so, and I won't go into the details, but they did get um, some boons. magical boons yeah. that allowed them uh, to find a way to move the forge at the last minute. Okay. So they were all wiped out, but they did save the forge for future generations. And, uh, you know, at the end, we did a little moment about um, what stories will your ancestors tell about that time when you saved the forge for the rest of us so that we would we would have this um, this this magical uh, artifact as part of our community for generations to come and that that brought meaning to their sacrifice mm-hmm. um, and and I don't want to keep saying that and give the impression that this is a very serious show. <laughs> it's absolutely effing hilarious most of the time um, but it is important that that it not just be a massacre for the sake of a massacre. Yeah. No, there is a moment that one of the things that the show has that each show, for the most part, ends in an epitaph, right? It's yeah. this sort of a, a, a concluding beat or an end, sort of uh, an epitaph for the character. Uh, you know, and there's a way to sort of find closure with those characters. We fall in love with them over the course of the hour. You, you know, for the most part, all these characters are full of life and they're funny and the adventure's exciting. Um, but there's a, a a part of the show that allows us to, as an audience to to find this sort of moment of um, solace and, and you know it's one of the great things about the show yeah uh, so I focus I, I function as a host of the show so okay. I'm the only one who's in all 20 episodes and one of my main jobs in the show is listening to the course of the story and trying to figure out what that what that little piece is that I can pull out um, as we do the epitaphs to say, you know, here's this one little sliver of something um, that that had meaning and will continue to have meaning after you're gone. Um, and you know, I think that's that's something that all of us as human beings are sort of you know kind of looking for and mm-hmm. hoping for that that uh, when we face our own inevitable demise, that there will be some little sliver of meaning to what we did here. Um, and so I think uh, I, I think it's 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 rewarding, and as Matt said, it, it, it sort of helps you find closure with this process that you've gone through over the course of the episode. So when you guys were pitching the show, um, why did you opt for the, the standalone format, you know, a very like avant-garde for D&D uh, concept, uh, as opposed to like a traditional D&D campaign? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we, in approaching the idea, um, knew that we wanted to do, all of us, you know, uh, four of the five of us came from acting school together. We were sort of excited about the idea of doing a live show or streaming something. Mm-hmm. And when we looked at it, the more we looked at it the more we knew the critical role was a juggernaut in the space yeah. and that's not how we we couldn't compete with that um, and also you know the way we approached the game we were looking for a way to be fun uh, and easily accessible for mm-hmm. people in three hours sometimes over the course of you know 14 and 15 episodes that's pretty daunting and so Bill to his credit came up with this idea of a one hour TPK show that what, what made you what was the thing you said before that was like there's a reason why you came. There's a reason why you came up with the TPK in an hour. I forgot what it was. Well, yeah, I think it was mostly what you were saying before. That just I, I think that that it, it takes a special sort of brilliance to be able to do a three-hour show that people are going to really get hooked into, and and um, it's it's a very difficult format to engage people with. And I think we just said. Um, 
you know, let's, we, we looked at that and we said, okay, well, how can we create a meaningful D and D experience, uh, for the players and for the audience that, um, will, will really feel like Dungeons and Dragons and, and take you on a real journey, but end in an hour. And the answer is just kill them. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so that's where it, I think that's where it came from. I think we just we saw an opportunity to um, to just try to go in a slightly different direction than what other people were doing, and and thought maybe um, that would be a way to find our own little niche, and that's uh, it worked out pretty well. Now, do you guys think that uh, this format will be like replicated? You know, like you know how like Commander wasn't originally like part of Magic, and now you know. Do you think the TPK format's gonna be like the next big thing for D and D? Yeah. Um, <laughs> a year from now, no one will no. ever make second level again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're 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 only coming up with a book. It's going to be purely first level rules. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, it's uh, you know. It's the best. It's five, uh, uh, copying is what is it? Having a stroke today. I cannot speak. Yes. I'm Jen Con. Serious form of flattery. Yes. 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 Um, but look, I, I, I hope. I mean, I hope so. I hope people take inspiration from it. I mean, I think the thing we think is that, and I think one of the great things about the show is that the game can be played anyway, mm -hmm. right? And we have 20 episodes. We have multiple DMs. We have different casts every single time. And every single time the game is represented in a different way, each game has a different tone, a different tempo, a different set of relationships. And the story plays out different every time. And so I think for me, the thing, I don't know if you want to take that exact, um, you know, the form of what we do, but I do think the idea idea of, of letting the game be its own game every single time and finding access into it however you play well you know whatever turns you on finding a way to bring that to streaming instead of emulating you know these three hour shows but maybe that's how you want to do it but if that's not what you want to do you know find your way to tell the story and that to me is what i would hope people would pull from instead of just sort of ripping the floor. Yeah, and you know, maybe for the games at home, you know, maybe that night when, you know, you're all sitting around and you go, oh, we've only got an hour and a half, I sure would love to play D&D, but maybe it's not worth it. Eh, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe you give it a shot. Yeah, yeah Purple Worm fun. Game is good. Yeah, Purple Worm Game, I like this. All right, uh, any last word, any last word, we're talking about a TPK show. Yeah. <laughs> any, any, any final words for the audience? But no, like any, any, any last thoughts, you know, before we wrap this interview up yeah i mean you know frankly uh we're really proud of the show mm -hmm. right we're, we're gamers lifelong gamers we all start playing as kids we all met up at 21 we were in acting school and we're now over 50 and we still play together it's i always say it's the best way to spend the life and so for me the idea that our show is by gamers for gamers you know our hope is that you know we think dungeons and dragons adventure shell the fast shell is going to be incredible mm -hmm. we think that it's on brand that people who love this game and love this community are going to be represented there's a cooking show you know there's a, a great show called encounter party that's like more of a three-hour traditional show mm -hmm. um there's all different kinds of shows they picked up and there's the cartoon and so for me you know the one thing i'll say is that this content if you love this content seek it out find it tell your friends because that's how you get more content that you like and that's like a plug but it's a humble plug in a way that we're here to make great stuff for you but it only works if you support the things that are made well said okay well thank you very much